What's up everybody? Welcome back to another David Maxwell Golf video where today I believe that I have completely fixed my swing without even hitting a ball. Now that might sound silly, but you know what? Last night I was going through something and I thought I have actually found it. I've just found the magic that was going to be the cure to all of my problems. I was staring at this. Now that mark, believe it or not, is a lot more evident in this club. It's an older club. However, that mark is through every single one of my clubs and I'm like, I'm just tearing through my groups because my thumb, on my thumbprint there, is so aggressive that it's actually wearing through all these grips really, really quickly. And I'm like, maybe if I just put it to the side and then I'll say, oh my gosh, this has actually just fixed everything in my golf swing. So let me explain. You see, when you've got your thumb straight down the line of the golf club, and I'm using this golf club as an example because it's the longest one and it, it, it's got the thickest head. But basically, if I put my thumb there, right, where, where all the marking is, what can happen is you can see that as soon as I apply pressure there, it opens the club face right? Thumb off, thumb on. Thumb off, thumb on. So as soon as I put the pressure, it opens the club face and I've actually got to use my right hand to then apply the corrective pressure and close that club face. If I sit here, it might be better. Open, normal. Open, normal. So as soon as I put my thumb on that club, what that means is that when I'm in my downswing and I start to pull, look how open that club face is. I've really got to get down here and then flip it to come to square. Otherwise, I get that weak fady i call it like a powder puff slice which to me is like the ugliest shot in golf i just i really despise that shot when i start seeing that shot in my golf game i know that i'm swinging it really bad it also makes it incredibly difficult to have a draw unless you're really rolling your wrists or really flipping it and rolling your wrists at the bottom so to me this is no surprise that i've had a lot of trouble as i've gotten through the bag from you know four sorry from like seven iron starting to do it a little bit and then going up to six iron doing it more than driver doing it a lot okay so what's the fix what's the magic you might ask i was in my room and i thought well if i just move my thumb from here to just on the inside now just just resting on the inside i'm going to try and sit here so you can see the down the line so that's pressure on there and if i just put it on the inside there you can see the club face stays square i actually have to move my wrists in order for me to open that club face but if i put my thumb on the top opens club face put my thumb to the side, it's fine. And it's still just as comfortable. And then when I'm coming through, you can see that that club face stays a lot more square to my spine angle as opposed to my thumb being there. And now it's open a lot, see? Thumb there, open, thumb to the side, square. That's a theory. I haven't even hit a ball with this, but that's a theory. I believe that it's gonna work. Let's get into it and let's start with maybe a, let's say an eight iron. Let's start with an eight iron, go to the six iron and then driver. All right, so let's go. So even when I'm coming down here, see so here's the method to my madness, right? So this is the thumb on the top, the way that you're seeing it, that opens the club face. So if I'm coming up and then I'm coming down at the ball, you can see there exactly how open that is with my thumb on the top, right? If I move my thumb to the side, all of a sudden, that's now a lot squarer. I'm still reaching for the ball. I should actually be a lot closer, but that is now a lot squarer. Thumb on top, open. Thumb closed, closed. Thumb on top, open. So you can see that that's where the theory of what I'm trying to do here and trying to achieve is with such a simple swing change. Well, I haven't even changed my swing at all, really. It's just a grip change to get a better result. All right, so let's hit some up and down. Oh. I mean, that's it's a little bit of a tired swing. I did a speed training session yesterday, but that's exactly what I'm talking about. So when I'm getting tired, when I'm getting a little, you know, sore, I mean, I've started that way, right? So that's exactly what I've been seeing is that little... You know, you miss greens from 150 and that, it's just frustrating. So I'm just going to hit a few of these and give you maybe five shots to, to see. It's, this is a carbon copy. Okay. So now I've just tried to hit a standard shot. So now what my brain does is it goes, okay, I've hit two shots right. Now I'm going to try and correct it. I'm going to try and, you know, flip it and get it turning over. So I'm trying to make this as, you know, as lifelike as possible. I'm hitting these really well. So I've just hit three in the same spot with that grip. Now, what I do in my brain is this is where my thought pattern goes. I'm just sharing it with you guys because you might have the same. I go, okay, well, then I'll just aim left. And you end up opening yourself up and sometimes you hit it good, sometimes you hit it more right. So let's just aim left and play for that fade. And then it goes more right, see? Because you've opened your body up I mean, that grouping is, the grouping is fantastic, right? I just, I can't control it. So my club face and my delivery, my swing is actually quite good. It's just that my, sorry, not my, my club face delivery is not good. My swing and my consistency within that swing must be good because they're all in the same area, 
but the club face is not good, it's not square. <coughs> that was the best of the lot, and again, it's still... I mean, that dispersion, you look at the right side of the screen there, it really is exceptional. Like, it's, it's really good, it's just not one of them are on the green. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add that thumb just to the side and swing the exact same way and see how this changes things. First one is out almost the exact same. That's not good. <laughs> Hang on a second. That's not good. Let me get used to it. That's literally the first swing that I've done with the thumb there. Oh, there we go. I mean, that's, to be honest, like that's what I expected because a club face is square, right? I'm not trying to be like arrogant or cocky or anything about it. I, I really do hope that it helps a lot of you guys. But if the club face is square at impact, the ball's got to go straighter. Now, it might take you a few, like it's going to take me a few to get used to the thumb being in a different position. But the club face should at least be square. No, cut under that. Hmm. Straighter. And hit it well. There we go. So it is, it's definitely a little bit to get used to without my hands rolling the same way, but the result is much improved. I've actually got three out of five on the green in, instead of none, and I've been able to square up the club face. Now, can I square up the club face the other way? Well, yes, but it creates bad habits. It means that with it that open, I've got to flip, and I've got to roll the wrists a heck of a lot, whereas this way, I can just keep the swing through impact, and eventually, with some practice, like I said, again, it's the first time I'm doing this, it will get better and better. What should we do? Let's jump up into a six iron and see how that goes. Actually, you know what? Let's just compare for a moment. The second one is the iron, okay? The first one is the eight iron, which is here. So first one, carry is exactly the same. Total is exactly the same. The first one has 400, 500 nearly RPMs more spin uh, because I'm, I'm cutting under the ball. So once I actually get warmed up, my ball speed here is only 112. That, I'm getting warmed up, right? So that gets up to around about 118, 120 when I'm swinging this 8 iron well. My distance difference with that 500 RPMs less of spin will actually be more using that new style of grip. The launch angle is the exact same, except I'm getting benefits of accuracy. You can see that it's closer there, and also I'm getting benefits of a little bit less spin, which makes more distance. All right, guys, so now into the 6 iron, and this is where, for me, it definitely starts to exaggerate a little bit as the irons get longer, but let's have just normal swing thumb on the top. See, I, I hit that so good, and now we're getting that same. Actually, it's identical to the 8 iron, except it's just a little further right. So if you, if you had the 8 iron distance and the green, like that's, again, just identical. Hit that one again, good. It's just a carbon copy with that, that slight fade. Oh, that's me trying to see. That's the trying to correct it, and I've, I've hooked it. So, it's this kind of distance where it starts to go a little bit everywhere for me, and I'm, that's why I'm really trying to correct it. Oh, it's, oh, see, I thought I hit that really good, and again, it's just fading. I absolutely smoked it, to be honest with you. But again, I'm just off the green. So, if you're trying to hit into a par five and you're wanting the best shot at eagle, none of these are going to give you that. See, when, when, you think, when you think you got it good, that's going to be actually pretty good in the end. I thought it was going further right than that. That's just not good enough dispersion if you're really trying to lower your scores, especially on those par fives. You've got probably a tricky chip up and down. You might be short-sighted. Definitely that one on the left, you've got probably no green to work with, and you're going to be lucky to make par from even green side. Change the colour now. We've got the thumb down the side, okay? Exact same swing, just the thumb down the side. Didn't get it, but it was actually a pretty poor swing. And even though it was a poor swing, at least it's straighter compared to the other ones. I hit the other ones really well. Getting used to the grip still. That was nice. It's fading a little. It's straighter. I'm still rolling the wrist back. But it's better there than the other ones. That was nice. That one's on the green. 
So this is where like the difference is starting to really come into its own. Like they look significantly straighter on an average. I've hit three of them on the green or either on the fringe. Ah, uh, that's the one. That's the bad one. I've let that go in my hands. That's, that's probably the worst of the lot. And then you hit it like that. See, that is pure. That was absolutely smoked. I've got more distance. I'm over the green because I hit it good. I'm not unhappy with that. So that's literally the best shot of the bunch. The spin's in a much better window. Let's check those numbers. All right, so when we go into the numbers here, what we can see is, again, I'm still warming up. My ball speed's normally around about 131, like you saw those last ones. But we've got the first six iron here, which, again, is showing that right fade. And then my second attempt, which is a brand new grip change for me. So brand new, and I'm already seeing quite a dramatic improvement in terms of direction. My numbers are almost the exact same, except again, 200 less RPMs a spin. Ball speed is roughly the same. You'd say that strike dependent carry is exactly the same. Launch angle is exactly the same. Other than the direction, it seems to have fixed. I'm not gonna say entirely because there's obviously still swing flaws and things that you need to go through, but it's definitely straightening up, straightening, straightening up my swing and isn't that a benefit to everybody? All I've done is move my thumb from there to there. Simple. So now the biggest test, which is going to be driver. Okay. Everybody wants to go and hit the long ball. They want to hit the big ball. But my biggest frustration with driver is that I've been hitting that exact same shot with every single club that slightly goes right. Which I guess is kind of good because it's just a consistent miss that you can fix. But here's the thumb on the top now. And that is exactly what has been happening. <clears throat> Again, I mean, it's a carbon copy, isn't it? Like, you can see every single club, every single shot has the same miss, which is good, but not good. Good because it's one thing that you've got to work on to fix it. Not good because you've got to fix it. <clears throat> now... Someone's going to say, well, just aim left, and then you'll hit it straight. Well, let's do that. Oh, and of course I've squared it. I actually squared that one. I didn't expect that to go further, further right. But, I mean, 260 metres for me, that's really not enough. Um, 260 metres, about 280-something yards. It's just, yeah, it's just not where it should be. 161 ball speed. So you're losing ball speed, you're adding spin, 2,800 spin. That's kind of what I expected the first one to do. See, it ends up spinning up higher, going shorter, and then I'm right, and I mean 240 meters with the driver is just not kosher. That's, that's not good, and they're all fades. But so now, exact same thing with the thumb on the other side. I've hit that draw. So I'm able to aim straighter. I've hit it further. And let's see what... My ball speed's gone up because I've got a square face. My carry's 257 and I've now hit that over 300 yards. So I've gained 10 yards with the same pretty much everything else. Again. That's a great looking ball flight. I mean, look how much straighter every single one of those are. And I didn't get that, that one that good. That one might spin up a little bit, but we're still dead center of the fairway instead of right. 2,900 backspin. So I did spin up, but we're in the fairway. That one I got under. That's the bad one. That's the one. It's a brand new grip, so you're not like... In mid-swing, you've got to make sure that that thumb doesn't slide back to the top, because then it will do this again. See? Thumb slides to the top, over. Thumb stays there, closed. That's nice. Again, so, these are fairway swings, not the longest, but we've got 165 mile per hour ball speed, 270 meters of total distance. Look at the dispersion on the pink and 
the yellow, I mean, to be honest, both of the dispersions are actually not that bad. It's just little things in the swing that would really change your game. And definitely, even just in theory, I thought this would happen and it has happened. And it makes sense because the club face is square. Let's check the numbers. All right, so numbers in driver are probably the biggest difference, but that's only because um, of the, the way that the club head's getting delivered to the ball. So 160 mile per hour ball speed versus 163.7. Launch angle is actually a little bit higher with the different grip. That's probably just me getting used to it, not getting through the ball. Carry distance is 10 meters of difference and what's that, 11 meters total rollout difference with a little bit less spin. Again, that spin will come down. I'm, I'm still really, this is like the 20th shot or something like that I've hit today. So guys, that's it for me today. I really do hope you liked that. I hope that that was beneficial for you. All it was, was a simple grip change and I feel like I've at least straightened up my swing a lot more to become more consistent with my irons and my driver, hit more fairways, hit more greens, shoot lower scores. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. It really helps me out. Subscribe to the channel. Throw in any of the comments in the comment section. I'll get back to every single comment in there. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Cheers, guys.